to fall at the feet of Jesus. Uh, he's going to burn out every bit uh, of, of those things uh, that have been weighing down upon you. And I've come to declare war today. I'm not preaching and I'm trying to get through what we've got to do because I want to bring the preacher up. But I feel in my spirit today to declare war on every obstacle, on depression, uh, on every uh, everything that would raise itself up against the knowledge of Christ. I've come to declare war in the name of Jesus uh, because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. 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 Your problem is not bigger than God today. Hallelujah. Your sickness is not bigger than the great physician today. Hallelujah. Give it to Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm actually up here to give out some baptism certificates. <laughs> You've heard about preaching the offering, and that was a good message, sister. <laughs> You've heard about preaching the announcements, like our brother does sometimes. I, I guess I'm preaching the baptism certificates. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. It is so wonderful to be in the house of the Lord today. So good to see everybody. Thank you for being here today. And I want to bring at this time Pastor Morgan. I know the Lord has given her a word for us. And so I want her to come and to bring the word and let the Lord use her today. Praise the Lord. Aren't you glad for his presence that's here? It is just beyond words. I uh, was sitting there and, and just enjoying the presence of the Lord and a vision of Jesus walking up and down these aisles and just lightly touching each person that he passed. And you know what? You can, if he touched you, your life is never going to be the same. And he loves you that much that he came by and just gave you a light touch today. And if you had healing, it was with him. And you can reach out and claim it. Jane came up and told me while we were singing, she received healing this morning. She was so sick. Hallelujah. The healer is in the house. Hallelujah. He came to do exactly what you need, and he is here to supply the needs of each one of you. And I studied and studied and studied and studied this week. Guess what? <laughs> when I got to church, <laughs> the Lord said, I was going to ask you, are you planning your wedding? You know, well, then the words came to me, what are we planning? What are we planning? If we're the bride of Christ, we should be all excited about the wedding coming up. And it truly is. God is, he's coming back for his bride that has made themselves ready for him. And then I was just so excited about that, and I've been thinking about it a lot, and, and how excited I was when I got married to the kid's father, and how I planned, and how I wanted just the right uh, wedding dress, and, and just the right uh, trousseau, and everything. And I wanted to make sure that I had neat stuff to move into the little house we were going to live in, and. Oh, it was wonderful planning and I, all the guests we wanted to invite and, and everything. So I was making plans every day and, and I got a notebook and I started writing things down. Oh, I'd like to have this and I want this color and I want to do this and I want this song because he really likes this song and I want him to be pleased. And, uh, you know, and I got to thinking about it. We need to be planning our wedding. We need to be excited about the wedding that we're going to be in when Christ comes back for the bride. You know, we, we want to be able to please Him. We want to do the things that pleases Him. We want to lay aside the things that in our life that are, are confusing and, and 
because he died for us. He loved us that much. He's so in love with us. And he wants to be loved in return. You know, um, he has everything set before us and every good and every perfect gift that he's giving to us. And he's given to the body of Christ. He has placed gifts within. There's brand new gifts that are being manifested in our young people and in throughout the body of Christ that are brand new to them. And God is enriching their lives and, and showing them that obedience is better than sacrifice. And I said, okay, Lord, I'm trying to make my plans. But he gave me Jeremiah 29, 11. That's one of our most favorite scriptures. So many of you know it by heart. And it's just been such a blessing for you. He says, I know the plans I have for you. I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace. How many of you have peace in your life? That's what God's thinking about for you. The peace of God that passeth all understanding. We may be going through turmoil. We may be going through hard times. Questions in our mind. What are we going to do next? But if we quiet ourselves before him, that peace will come in. You don't understand it, but there it is. Because he is the prince of peace and he lives within us. His word declares that it's the, he has thoughts of peace and not of evil. You know, we need to magnify him instead of the evil things that are coming our way. You know, the more you magnify something, the larger it gets. And the smaller these other things be, start to become, you know, you go out, you could look up at the sun. And if you put just a small little eye, item closer and closer and closer to your eye you can't even see the sun after a while but you can see only that thing that is before you. you're magnifying that and when we magnify the lord the 34th psalm i think it's the third verse it says oh magnify the lord with me let us exalt his name together hallelujah his name is above every name and his name every knee must bow every tongue confess he has set before us life and death today we choose life because that's what he paid for for us like calvary hallelujah he said oh he gives us peace and not of evil to give us an expected end he has a plan for our end he's the beginning and the ending hallelujah he gave us life that we could live for him and not only for ourselves but to the holy spirit came to make us a witness to others and, and that they might see the goodness he said let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven you know they became you cook something that tastes good and it smells really good and and pretty soon people begin mm, something's going on and they kind of go that way <laughs> i know when I, I came out of the, my house the other day and i smelled barbecue oh i thought oh my goodness that smells so good i wonder where that's going on <laughs> I didn't go looking, but I wanted to. <laughs> so we can have the fragrance of the Holy Spirit in our lives when we give ourselves to him. He is our everything. He has never failed. He's mighty in battle. And when we have a battle, Lord is right there. He's right there and he will fight for us. He said, be still and know that I am God. And the, the battle is not yours, but God's. And, when I was over in Hawaii, I had was having a real trial, and I, I was praying and praying, and uh, our pastor came up to me, and he said, the Lord wants me to tell you that the battle is not yours, but God's, and uh, I said, okay, thank you, and I said, thank you, Jesus, and I still wasn't really relieved, and I went to the mailbox, and I got a letter from my mom first thing she said is the battle is not yours but God's <laughs> and I 
I had one more confirmation of that. I, it seemed like three in that one day, the same scripture. And it finally got from up here to down here. And I began to worship the Lord. And in that worship, it was tearing down those strongholds that had come against me. And our praise will do exactly that. When we begin to worship and magnify the Lord, those strongholds come down, become smaller and smaller. And we have victory. He said that we would be made more than conquerors through Christ Jesus, our Lord. And because we magnify him, he brings forth the answers that we need. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Last Sunday when I started to, to get ready for church, I was sick, sick, sick. <laughs> and uh, just, oh, nauseous and, and having such a hard time. And I went out and I got in the car finally and got dressed and ready and, and started out and turned on the air conditioning and nothing. And it was, it would not come on, would not come on. I laid hands on it and I said, in the name of Jesus, you be well. You're not allowed to do that. I'm a child of God. And uh, it didn't come on. <laughs> but you know what? <laughs> the next, after service, I didn't need the air conditioning. It was, you know, it was cool by the time I started home. The next day when I went to the bank, I turned it on and here it came. It just came on and, and I haven't had any problem with it anymore. The Lord knows and Satan knows when we have authority, he has to obey. He has to step back because the word of God declares that we are more than conquerors. Hallelujah. And I love him and thank him because he has plans for our life and he wants our attention. He wants us to love him like he loves us. And if, it, if our kids had need of something, we would do everything in our power to give it to them. Even uh, my kids are not in my home anymore, but I still want to give to them all the time. But uh, recently, I, I um, inherited a kitty cat, and I haven't had a pet in a long, long time. And, uh, <coughs> excuse me. I really got to love that cat. He was so much fun and so funny. And this morning, when I was still studying, while I was in bed, and I had the Bible open, and I pulled my purse up on the bed and opened it and was doing something, and Kitty jumped up on the bed and got in my purse. <laughs> You know, he just did cute things, and he he sat and he turned his head upside down and went to sleep. <laughs> so he was been a lot of pleasure to me. But I thank God for those little things because He is so mindful of us. He knows what we have need of when we have need of them. He knows that sometimes we have to give up things we really like too, and. Uh, so, but he guides every step we take. I'm so glad that he has plans for my life. He had, he made those plans way back on Calvary. He knew exactly who I was going to be born to, and he made such a good choice. I'm so glad. I had the most wonderful parents in the world that were called of God, and the Lord placed that call in my life also as a child. And I, I just remember uh, as a child how I would pray and pray and pray and seek the Lord and I would begin to see answers to those prayers and, and he would put a song in my heart and, and I'd go to church and I'd sing and I'd worship God and I received the Holy Spirit <coughs> we had lived on a farm and uh, we did we played church you know that's what we we didn't play cowboys and indians we played church <laughs> and my brother my older brother was called to preach as a child and and so we go down to the chicken house and there was a feed room down there and we had these big gunny sacks full of feed in there so we made pews out of those and we took a box and made a pulpit and and so he got up and just preached and and we would holler and praise God. And then he called for whoever needed the Holy Ghost. And I needed it. I wanted it. And 
I received it. Hallelujah. <laughs> and it's been so good all of my life. It's been there. Hallelujah. There were times when I became weak and I would stray and he would gently bring me back. You know, and, and out of weakness, the Hebrews tells us, out of our weakness we're made strong. Hallelujah. I'm so glad that he knows our every weakness and that I learned to take everything to God in prayer. And when you do that, he loves it. He loves for us to share our lives with him. He gives us strength every day. He gives us joy. I've always loved to laugh and have fun. And um, I thought, well, the joy of the Lord is my strength. That's where my strength comes from. My girlfriend and I, along oh, a few years back, took a trip and we were from the Atlantic to the Pacific and we'd stop at every little pig path along the way and, and look and see what was going on like the the um, petrified forest and just all of these things and uh, we would we decided we would make a list that uh, if we ever got married again, this is the man, this is what we wanted in a man. <laughs> and we, one of the things was that we wanted somebody that loved to laugh, somebody that loved to enjoy life. And, and you know, laughter's good medicine for you. That's been proved scientifically. And the, the joy of the Lord is our strength. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so we we made this list and it got longer and longer and longer <laughs> and we wanted them to have certain color hair you know and, and we wanted them to be you know kind and gentle and good and thoughtful and all these things we put down and and so uh, we got to thinking well i need to be these things i need to be these things if i want if that's what i want and we gave them to the Lord, but uh, I didn't get married anymore. <laughs> and I thank God that he has been my husband in my life since my, my husband passed away. And, and, and the Lord has taken me from what I thought was ruin. I thought my life is ruined uh, because I can't minister anymore. And he was a, a great minister, but... The Lord has brought me day by day, hour by hour, step by step. Sometimes when I didn't know which way to turn, I knew that I could turn to him because he is my everything. I'm so glad that he has the plans for my life. And then when I seek his face, that those plans begin to be unveiled in my life. And that he has made plans for each one of you. And that you are the apple of his eye. And that he is going to do exactly what he said he would do if you yield yourself to him he's made a way so many times when there couldn't be a way made he has just come to me in the night hours and one night when i was taking care of my mother in her last days at home and i had moved into her house to to take care of her i woke up one morning really early it was just pounding like a drum you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You shall lay hands on the sick and they will recover. And it was over and over and over. And finally, I jumped out of bed and I said, Lord, that's you. That's your word. That's what you're saying to me today. But you know what? I'm no, he's no respecter of persons. He's speaking to each one of you. The word of God is true. It's life to each one of us. If we will obey what he brings to us, there's no telling what could happen because he has a plan for each one of our lives. We don't need to try to mix it up with the world. We don't need to be double-minded. We need to keep our minds stayed on him. And we, the confusion will leave if 
if we keep our minds settled on the Lord, because he said, great peace have, are, have they that love my law. And he said that the peace of God that passes all understanding, that he has given that to us. And he said, great peace are, have they that love his law, that love his word, because he is his word. If you realize that, John said that in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. So you begin to love him, you begin to love his word. You begin to love him, the plans that he has for you. And he has special, something very special for you today. We can know that we are the bride of Christ. And if we obey him, and if we walk in step with him, you know, the, he said to take his yoke upon us not the yoke of the enemy. The Holy Spirit came to destroy that. And the, the greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And he gave the Holy Spirit to destroy that yoke. That every time something comes against us, we can stand up and say, he's greater inside of me. And he came to destroy that. And I take his yoke upon me because his yoke is easy and his burden is light. And we are his disciples a disciple is a learner and we want to be a learner he said take my yoke upon you and learn of me and if we learn of him and get to know his ways get to know his thoughts get to know his healing get to know his deliverance we can then give it to somebody else because he touched us we can reach out and touch somebody else i'm so glad for him today i'm so in love with jesus that i be begin to concentrate more on being the bride of Christ. Uh, I begin planning for that wedding. Uh, I begin to get myself ready. I begin to lay aside things that come in my life that have, have drawn me astray and kept my mind off of him because he doesn't want somebody that is double-minded. He wants somebody that keeps their mind stayed on him, that enjoys him, that delights themselves in him. Uh, he is so good today is if you have any doubts in your heart and in your mind you will know that God is right here for you today and if you've strayed or if you've grown cold in your heart and in your mind and you've quit thinking about the things of God and quit thinking about what is going on and in, uh, in your life and you you just want to love him that's what he desires more than anything. He's coming for a bride that's in love with him. Hallelujah. And I'm so in love with Jesus today. And I know that he wants every one of us to be in love with him. That he is coming back. It's a fact. He's coming back for his bride. And I want to be in the bride. I don't want to be left behind. I want to serve him with all of my heart. I want to please him in all my ways, in all my my words and all my deeds because he does make a way for us and he is going so right beside us and we walk in step with him as we take his yoke upon us and we cannot go astray because when you want your yoke with something you just you have to walk with them you can't pull away because you're you're fastened in there. Set yourself. Set your mind. Make up your mind. Decide that you're going to follow Jesus regardless of what. And you're going to be his bride. He's getting us ready. We're getting ourselves ready. You know, I, my girlfriend told me, she says, you know, that we don't go and, and pick out a, a wedding garment, but that we are being cut for the wedding garment. The wedding garment's not being cut to fit us. We are being cut to fit the wedding garment that he has prepared us to be the bride, pure and white and clean before him. And I want to make that a prayer today for each one of us that we will follow him regardless. We will lay aside the weights that so easily beset us, that come around and taunt us and try to pull us aside because he is worth everything. Pastor said it's worth it all. 
It's worth it all. I want to tell you today, it's worth everything. In this life, we lay aside the stuff that pulls us aside and, and make him Lord of our life. Hallelujah. Can we stand to our feet this afternoon? Father, I just thank you for each one here today. I thank you, Lord, that you have called each one of us, that you have plans for our life. And Lord, though we stray, you bring us back, dear Lord, and you cause us to desire you more than anything in this life. We want to be in the bride, Lord. We want to be prepared. We want to follow you with everything we have within us. Meet with us today, dear Lord, and and cause us to oh lord to fall at your feet and worship oh lord and to praise you in all we do and make ourselves ready we give you glory and praise for what you have done in our lives lord thank you for being here today thank you for walking these aisles thank you for laying your hand upon each one of us lord that if we receive from you you will meet every need in our life, and we thank you for it in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah.